Your commentator is James Coy. More than 8,000 miles from the American mainland lies Australia, destination of an endless caravan of United Nations ships, bringing troops, planes, and supplies to augment General MacArthur's fighting command. Convoys splashed through the perilous Jap-infested waters, great armadas bringing to the land down under a massive flood of manpower and mechanized might to carry the war to the enemy. Constant vigilance is maintained against enemy surprise attacks Gun practice is a daily order and duty. Guarded by sturdy ships and ever watchful planes, American fighting men land safely on Australia's friendly shores. Buddies on sight, the Yank and the Aussie. Many of these well-trained and equipped soldiers never had seen the ocean before, but they have an important job to do and are eager to get it over with. Eager to fight under the command of their new military leader, General Douglas MacArthur, who spoke the immortal words, I came through, I shall return. Where to? No one asks. Just all aboard and they're off. At Port Moresby, strategic outpost at New Guinea, Allied bombers take off to not only bomb the enemy, but to constantly observe and disrupt his movements. Here's a bomber returning, returning without landing gear. This American plane's hydraulic system has been damaged by the enemy. Can he pancake down to a safe landing? Watch the remarkable feat of this skillful Yankee pilot. All safe, all well. And a handshake from the general for a gallant son of Uncle Sam. First Australian town to be hit by the Japanese is the northern port of Darwin, with a population of about 5,000. Bombed again and again by the enemy attempting to gain a foothold, the city was peppered with fragmentation bombs designed to inflict casualties, usually at troop concentrations. Always on the alert, the defenders of Darwin are quick to take to their gun emplacements, camouflage shelters which are difficult to detect from the air. Above is the drone of enemy aircraft, brings the anti-aircraft guns into instant action. Directly to the east of Darwin, off the northern coast of Australia, lies the Coral Sea. It is here for the first time in this war that the American and Japanese navies come to grips in a major action. In the very center of the Coral Sea, the two task forces meet in mortal struggle. Aircraft carriers, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers and gunboats fill the sea. While airplanes drone their way into the skies. Land bombers from MacArthur's heroic air force join in the fray. Below decks, Yankee pilots receive final instructions. 
each eager to take off to meet the enemy shot for shot. In the Coral Sea, Japanese losses were heavy and costly. Playing a leading role in this great drama was the United States aircraft carrier Lexington. From her decks flew the gallant pilots who pounded and dispersed the enemy. Now, she is hit in a flame. The Lexington, victorious in its defense of the Allied forces, has struck a mortal blow. 98% of its gallant crew is rescued. Here are the remarkable close-up pictures of the explosions that ended the Lexington's heroic career. Hardly had the din of guns been hushed in the Coral Sea when the Battle of Midway blazed forth in all its mighty fury. Here the United States forces met and crushed a full Jap battle fleet. By sheer weight of numbers, the Japs hoped to overwhelm and conquer our mid-Pacific fighting forces. The Japs had carefully planned this sneak attack. They gambled all and lost. The Battle of Midway, the Japs hoped, would be their stepping stone to Pearl Harbor, Australia, Alaska, and eventually, the United States mainland. Here the Japs received a mortal wound. Here our defenders were ready. First in the air were our Marine Corps fighters, then our Army flyers, and finally our fighting Navy, all working in complete unity and concentrating relentlessly and successfully upon the common enemy. The toll of enemy fighting power was decisive. Three Japanese battleships, possibly four cruisers, three transports and one destroyer were sunk. The loss of the Jap aircraft carriers was extremely heavy. Two or three sunk and two badly damaged. From this Allied bomber can be seen part of the destruction wrecked upon the enemy. As the Jap fleet turned about, battered and beaten, the Battle of Midway became America's outstanding success, and one that may decisively change the balance of striking power in the Western Ocean. of terrific anti-aircraft fire, Jap planes like this one swoop close, their suicide pilots knowing full well that their battle is ended. Although never within a day's sailing distance of each other, the battle carried on furiously for five full days. Aircraft action was paramount. The perfect teamwork at midway between the commanders of our Army, Navy and Marines struck the Japs a truly crippling and now historic blow. To the Navy goes America's profound thanks and admiration. To its individual heroes go decorations, symbolic of the highest honors a nation can bestow upon its fearless fighting men. And to the Marines and our Army men goes a nation's heartfelt gratitude. United as one great force, they will repeat the triumphs of Coral Sea and Midway in the mighty battle still ahead. A battle that will go on until victory is won. Music